Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, unreproduced Amiga program. And yes, today I'm doing a lightweight video. Goodbye, half of you. All right, so in all seriousness, now that we're back, those of you that stayed for this Lightweight video, if you watched my last video, I covered and kind of briefly showed at the end the original production model Star Trek Voyager spaceship, okay, in Lightwave. It was originally created in the Windows version of Lightwave, and then I've brought it over to the Amiga version of Lightwave, and I promised that we'd try and uh, make it look more like it looked when it was in the show instead of the crazy clown colors it was. And that's going to involve a couple things. One, getting to show you some Lightwave again for my Lightwave fans out there. Uh, and then also being able to show you how to adjust lights in Lightwave and uh, make the render look nice. So uh, while we wait for this thing to load, as you know from the previous video, it does take quite a while to load. So I'll see you on the other side. So here we go. Uh, we got the Voyager all loaded. As you can see, we're in point only mode. It's about the only way I'd recommend. We are on the uh, Always Boots Amiga 3000 using a original Phase 5 50 megahertz 68060. It is using a Picasso 4 card, but I am not mode promoting Lightwave. This is the Picasso's built-in flicker fixer. Yes, I'm aware the 3000 has its own flicker fixer, but the Picasso, that's one of the great things about it, why it's also a great companion card to computers like the Amiga 4000, is it will grab all of the Amiga video and flicker fix it. And uh, actually the Picasso has these little gel bars that it's, that it's passing through from the uh, amber chip. But, um, so just letting you know what the system specs are here. And we're going to go to object and you'll see the total polygon count. This is the total polygon for all the objects loaded in the scene. Almost 300,000 polygons and 250,000 points. And the Voyager model is comprised of a bunch of different things here, as you can see. So it's, 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 a, lot of, it's a lot of parts. <laughs> it was a lot of parts to put together and manage. I am also going to use the Picasso Force 24-bit uh, display so that you can see the Voyager in its more proper 24-bit glory than it would have been on television instead of using on an Amiga 3000 at least uh, six bit hands. The first time you render something in Lightwave, it has to go through and filter all of the texture maps, okay? And this is a, a bit of a, a time consuming process, so I want to get it to go through and filter these. Now it only does this the first time on the first frame, and then every frame after that it won't have to do this, it'll just zip right through it. This is basically we're having all of that memory I talked about helps. Now Q, we didn't see you install that 256 megabyte got to go fast Z3 RAM module into this 3000. Well, you didn't because this phase five I have in here has 128 gigs in it. And that's just enough, plenty enough to, to get this sucker loaded and working. But I didn't quite need that memory. However, if I wanted to do more than just the Voyager, maybe have multiple Voyagers or have multiple or have a, a Voyager and a Klingon Bird of Prey or a Be Klingon Battle Cruiser and some other stuff, you can very quickly see how the memory is going to get chewed up really fast. Polygons and images, folks, they chew up memory in Lightwave. Yes, even Amiga Lightwave very, very quickly. All right, we've begun the render process, so here we go. Now you can see I set this to low res, but even on the mighty 50 megahertz 60 to 60, because again, this is a very intense production quality model. It's, it's kind of slow, and if we're trying to get things moving fast to try and test the lighting, we need to make this process a lot quicker. Otherwise, we're going to be here all day. And we don't want to be here all day. We want to start getting this dialed in. And the faster you can get results, whatever you can do to your scene to get the results faster, the more productive you're going to be and, and you're just going to be in a happier place. It allows you to be more creative too because you're getting that feedback quicker. So let's figure out what we can do to try and make areas of this faster that we're concerned about. We'll have to take it like a section at a time. So here comes our render and it is definitely coming in faster. And as I said, yeah, the, the, the initial setup phase Unfortunately, render resolution doesn't affect that process. That's always going to be the same consistent speed. And it takes a good 30 seconds for the uh, initial setup phase to take place. But now the actual rendering, because you can see the pixels are crawling along quite nicely. So how are we going to find what light is doing what, right? There's a lot of lights in here and I don't want to keep pressing F9. So one of the things, the tricks we can do, we can turn all the lights off and just start turning them on one by one to find out who is doing what. So let's do that next. So yeah, we have, we have this real obvious red one. My guess is this red light we're seeing is the uh, buzzard collector or buzzard collector on the front of the engine that's supposed to cast a little bit of light, but not this kind of crazy light. So let's go ahead and tag that one. I may have actually just guessed and picked it. Uh, 
with my amazing ability to guess and pick things, right? So we got top nacelle port red. There's a red one over here. Top back port red. There's another one down here. So there's a lot of, let's go to the top view here. And now we can see there's, here's, here's all of our ports. So this is why it's important to name your lights. Just, just, just don't start adding lights willy nilly to your scene in Lightwave. Name them, tell them specific, like see how, this, how, see how specific this is? Top, nacelle, port, red, okay? And for those of you that aren't into nautical stuff, port is left, starboard is right. And how it's easy to remember which is what, left and port have the same amount of letters in it, okay? That's a little tip trick there. So let's go ahead and process all of these red ones that say port. So what I'm gonna do to try and speed things up too, Let's find, what do we got here? We got one, two, three, four. This one just says bottom nacelle. Okay, so we've got five per side, right? And we can get through these pretty quick. So let's go back and one of the things we're gonna do is start with the first one. See this intensity fall off? Yeah, it's off. <laughs> this is a, a, one of the problems from going from the Windows newer version of Lightwave to the Amiga version, it lost its fall off. So I'm gonna quickly go through here and just turn this intensity fall off on for all of these. So just doing that, we, all, all we've done is turned on intensity fall off and ray tracing. We left the default to one. Remember I explained this in an old video. What does that one mean? Well, if we go to D, I'm sorry, if we go to options, we go to layout view, we can see here that each of these grid squares here, see these little squares in the background? Each of these is 50, unit 50, all right? That's the scale we're at. So one of these is 50. Now you could say it's 50 SI, you could say it's 50 meters. I mean, this is the Voyager. I don't know if it's built to scale. My memory is not that good anymore, but 50 meters. So that means this light here, if its intensity fall off is set to one, it's gonna cast no light. In fact, you can see right here, like here's the light. If, it, if we set it to 50, it's gonna cast about in a square this big, which may be desirable, but I'm thinking it may actually need to cast light to a hundred, right? So it covers two of these squares of light. So let's do that. Let's go here, let's go to every single one of these and set this to 100 units. So now what we're seeing is just those red lights. And at a value of 100 units, that's pretty aggressive, right? And one of the things we're gonna know right now from looking at this is yeah, those little uh, itty bitty red lights in the back, those, those shouldn't really be casting any light whatsoever. If they did, it would be only if you were, yeah, these ones back here. See all these back here? All these lights you see here, these are uh, basically uh, navigation lights. These are the little blinky blinks on, on the ship. And those really shouldn't be doing anything. And I wouldn't have known that really until I started paying attention and looking here. The Bizarre Collector lights, sure, those should be nice and bright and red and light up the ship, but not, not these. So we're gonna set this way, way down. We'll set this to like 10. So these, these all need to get, uh, these need to get turned down to just, just next to nothing really. I honestly don't even need to ray trace these at this point because their intensity fall off. And see, ray tracing is off, by the way. That's why <laughs> some of you may have caught that before I press F9 and we're yelling at the screen, but ray tracing was turned off. So that's why the ship was still washed in all of that red light because there was nothing to occlude it, nothing to block the light. But these little guys, they don't need to ray trace because they're so tiny. So let's keep going through and finding these little navigation-y type lights. Oh, there's another one. We'll set this to 10. Well, as uh, you can clearly see, there's uh, no light. Yes, yeah, so that confirms that my little pin lighting adjustments have worked. So all you're seeing here is just, these would be the little blinky, if I turn lens flares back on, yeah, you'd see little blinky glows here, little illumination lights. So here we are now on top of the Voyager with something a little more exciting. Here's the Voyager's logo name, and this gets lit up with uh, an insignia light, as they call it. And there it is, insignia point, insignia spot. So the little trick with these two lights, why are there two lights for insignia? When you're looking at a spotlight, I wish I had like something that looked like a spotlight. Do I have anything that looks like a spotlight? Here, pretend this is a spotlight, all right? So here's the light coming out. Well, in Voyager's case, let's say that I don't wanna spill coffee everywhere, so pretend this is the spotlight and the light's coming out. In Voyager's case, the spotlight is always kind of pointing down. So the little glowy lens flare that would normally shine in the camera and look all cool and cinematic, you're never really gonna see it because it's always pointing down. So what they've done here is they've added that little point light in, in, in its place, kind of like almost in the same spot, and they've turned lens flare on. So there's always gonna be this little sparkly, you know, spiky looking glowy thing where that, that light's at. So no matter where the camera is looking, okay, you're always gonna have that little glowy lens flare coming off the light because otherwise you'd never see it from the, uh, 
from the spotlight. So that's what that point light is being used for in this case. So that means the Insignia light is the only light casting light. It does not have an intensity fall off set. I don't know if that's a mistake or loss in translation. My guess is it might be lost in translation. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back on just to notice it's ray traced by the way. And I'm gonna go ahead to the top view. And yeah, look, it's, I'm gonna give it one. So here's, here's the logo. In fact, let's go ahead and go back to the view and let's zoom in to get closer to this subject that we're discussing this moment. So here we go, right? We've got our, we've got our spotlight and you can see here, it goes way, way, way out here. The spread is really, really intense. And because it's pointed down so abruptly, you can see how it's, here's the, here's the light. The way it's angled, it's just blasting the hull and the hull is stopping the light from going down here, of course. But that's why I have that really, really hot center. So that tells me there's two ways I could handle this. I could turn on intensity fall off to reduce that hot white blowout we were seeing here, or I could adjust this light intensity down. Either way, it's gonna reduce the overall intensity. So looking at our grid space here, that we know one of these is 50 units, I think what I'm gonna do is set it to 25, give it half, half the range, and then we're gonna see what that looks like. All right, so yeah, that did definitely reduce the uh, intensity of that, that hot spill here. We had a really big bright spot down here. And yeah, it has pulled back some of the uh, visibleness of the logo because of that. So this is gonna be a balancing act. It's gonna be balancing, maybe lowering the overall light intensity and then increasing the range. Uh, but one of the things I don't wanna to touch is the angle, the angle of that light, because that's how it was in the original model. So I'm gonna to have to balance that and see what I can accomplish with that. But you know what, that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna go through the painstaking process. Now that I've shown you kind of the the basics of what I'm gonna to have to do to get this lit properly once again. I'm gonna to have to go through all of these lights that you see here on the ship. You can see them just scattered all through here, this mess of boxes and cones and little star looking things. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, press stop on the camera, sit down with this, work on it for a couple hours and see what I can do. And when we come back, hopefully I can show you this looking uh, uh, nice and pretty, uh, at least as much as the Amiga can do. I hope uh, at least up to this point with the, the exciting world of light fall off and what they do and what they mean and me learning some things here that I for, had for long forgotten about, we've uh, slowly figured out together. All right, see you in a while. Well, now here we are after all this time. It took about two hours uh, to go through all of these lights. I also set up some camera stuff here. So by the way, I apologize. The whole video, I've had Amiga Lightwave here in four color mode. So you couldn't see like these nice little yellow highlight colors. I apologize for that. It made it harder to see what's selected. Like for example, if I pick a light, you know, and I go over here and you're like trying to find a light, you know, it's, it shows up much better on video because now you can see this little yellow thing instead of just a white thing, which blends in with all the gray things. I, sorry, I didn't turn that on until now. Um, I just, I totally forget about it. And it does, does slow down light wave a little bit, even with all this acceleration power. That's why it's better to do this on an AGA Amiga. The chipset doesn't seem to be as affected by eight color mode as the 3000s uh, ECS chipset. But yeah, I set up some kind of classic Voyager camera moves here. Not, not camera moves, sorry, camera positions. We've got this frame here and we've got like the classic from behind, which is you know, kind of looking at the shuttle bay here. And yeah, that takes a second to draw. So from back here and then kind of the classic under the belly looking up so we can see the deflector. And what I did is I did a three light setup. I ended up doing a kind of a key, a cool and a warm. And these are all shadow map lights. And for the main key, I did a shadow map with a little bit of fuzziness. Gave it about a megabyte to play with, so it's nice and tight, no uh, jaggies. The cool and the warm fills are just blue and warm and red lights, a little lower shadow map size and a more aggressive shadow fuzziness. Went ahead and turned back on the lens flares, went ahead and turned back on the, the glow effect, fired off the renders. I did these at the more normal 640 by 480 enhanced medium, adaptive sampling 32. You'll see ray trace shadows is turned on. That's for all those little pin lights. See all these little guys here, the little sparkles, looks like photon for, photon torpedoes. I Even though their, their fall off, their light is really, really tiny, as I showed you earlier. So even though their range is really short, even with that, they were still casting light off into areas they weren't supposed to because of the ray trace shadows was off. So that's why I did that. So after doing all that and firing off all those renders that took 
quite a while to get through, by the way, even on the 60 or 60. I don't even want to, I don't want to quote frame. Every time I quote frames, people call me a liar because then they fire up their 60 or 60 at 50 megahertz. And they're like, well, mine took 15 minutes and eight seconds. And you said yours took 10 minutes and five seconds. Well, I, I have three oh sixties here all at 50 megahertz. All three of them render at different speeds. So just know it's going to take, I don't know, 50 at 50, uh, I don't know, 50 megahertz or 60. It's going to take probably 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, maybe a frame. That's, that's my rough guesstimate, but let's go ahead and load up Ed pro and let's check out those renders. So here we got Voyager one, which is that first keyframe. We'll load that up. So it's detecting as an IFF 640 by 480. Now this begs the question, why is Picasso eight bit the only option? Why is there no Picasso 32? Want to do ham eight on the Picasso? Execute? What's going to happen? <laughs> Why can't we see Picasso 24 bit? Leave a comment below. All right. Well, that, uh, yeah, that didn't seem to work. It did not like that. Let's do Picasso 8 bit. I'm a little confused by that. So color map 256. Click execute. Yeah, that's, that, that's still the same. It's an 8 It's this 256 color, uh, Void render. I mean, it looks great. It looks really good, but there's, yeah, there's like this posterizing and banding going on. Now, of course, we could probably get rid of that with the amazing Floyd dithering here. Uh, let's go to dither. Yeah, here we go. Floyd. Floyd is awesome, as everybody knows. So we'll click execute. So 256 colors with Floyd dithering. And yeah, there you go. So all the uh, banding is gone and there's just kind of a fine, almost film green noise over everything. How pretty is that? Oh, look at that Voyager. That's it, folks. That is the actual... This is the actual texture size too. I didn't scale the textures down. I got them all over, didn't scale them down. So yeah, now you're actually seeing the, now that we've given it enough colors, by the way, you can see the green and the red navs all showing up, the little pin lighting, that's much better. In fact, let's go and let's load up that first one again. Be fair to it. Give it all, give it all the juice, all the colors. Yeah, much better. So you can see all the little lighting here. That's, that's a much better. I'm going to better look for it. And then we'll go ahead and load up the third one on the Amiga as it was back on TV all those years ago. Hey, look at that. See, very pretty. Even in 256 color Floyd mode, that looks really nice. I mean, honestly, this is a little more faithful to, you know, AGA chipset, right? I mean, Picasso's great and all, and it's 24 bit, but hey, this is, this is actual Amiga graphics showing us here, huh? Nice. So pretty. That is so pretty. All right. Uh, for those of you that do follow my channel, I'm going to put these images in my community tab on my YouTube. So if you want to see them a little bit better, I'll stick them in there and uh, you can click on them. I think the community tab lets you like look at them and download them. So I'll save these uh, IFF to JPEG, something more compatible for the Windows world, right? For those of you that stuck through this whole video, hey, rock stars, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you, you had some fun seeing Lightwave do stuff. And uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing the Voyager finally come to life uh, on the Amiga, where it belongs, right? All right. I'm done with this video, finally.